to share with you, uh, we were having a management board meeting and reviewing the present scenario. And we all know the difficult times that each member of the Vidya family and others are going through uh, at present. Uh, my heart goes out to all of you, especially those who are living through this COVID crisis and uh, prayers, uh, healing thoughts, and any assistance that we can be to you and your family, know that we are there with you. And you know that at any time, day or night, you can call a Vidya member and seek support. It is a tsunami across the country, and there's no one who's not spared from this. But we have to live and manage this crisis together. It is when we were having this management board meeting that we all decided that this is the time that we can all be there for one another in a healing workshop. And that's therefore the love and care workshop. The name given by Pratima Goel, who's our vice chair at Delhi, and she's there with us today doing the final messages. I called Monish Paul, who's there, you see him, he's actually in Manali right now conducting a, a camp in the middle of the snowstorm, as you can see, that's him, you see his outline, the outline there. He has no electricity, but he's sitting outdoors so that he can conduct this workshop for you. And uh, Monish immediately agreed, this is on a Tuesday and today's a Friday to do this workshop. So thank you, Monish. And thank you, my Vidya family, for connecting at such a short notice. Wonderful that we are together. We have an hour of learning from you, Manish, the great yogic techniques that will help us all to heal. <clears throat> so it is so important to love and respect and care for yourself. This is often understated. To fall in love with yourself is the first secret to your happiness. Self-love means accepting your emotions, for what they are and putting your physical, emotional and well mental well-being first. It's about me, myself, my self-esteem and my self-awareness, my strength, my weaknesses. You have to love yourself, respect yourself and understand yourself. Then only can you love others. If you remember when you go to on an aeroplane, many of us have not been for a year. When the oxygen mask falls on, what do they tell you to do? First, put it on yourself and then assist your little child or whoever's next to you, older person. The same concept. First, you have to do for yourself so you're strengthened and then you can strengthen somebody else. Same concept of love and care for yourself. So when you care for yourself, what happens? You relax. You relax your own brain cells. You reduce your stress. And it helps you to maintain a very good sleep pattern. When we suffer from stress and anxiety, we don't make very good decisions in life in life. In the words of researchers, self-compassion. Be kind to yourself in the midst of suffering and it'll change. Mindfulness says open to suffering with spacious awareness, uh, loving, with, with, with loving kindness and meditation or affectionate breathing as they call and informal practices for use in daily life that will change that add a soothing touch to your life and self-compassionate letter writing have all been shown um, to help study participants to develop the habit of self-compassion. We are planning to have these workshops every Friday in this pandemic. Every Friday, the Vidya family connects between three and four on this forum to learn from masters and bring into our life mindfulness, relaxation, and confidence to manage what we are all going through the present crisis and also change the way we think and work. Also remember that we are always there for each other and for support to work out on our challenges. So don't forget to share your needs on any Vidya platform and you know that your Vidya family is standing by you. Sunflowers look up to heaven to get their energy and their strength from the sun. But when the sun does not shine, like it's not shining right now where Monish is, what do sunflowers do? They turn to each other for support and help. It empowers them to continue to grow and shine. So we are the sunflowers for each other at Vidya. We are delighted to have you, Munish Paul, as our first dedicated guru to guide us. He is our Vidya, on our Vidya advisory board for the past four years. He and his team of amazing uh, uh, yogis have held several yoga workshops across the universe to raise awareness on Vidya and to raise scholarships for our Vidya school students in Gurgaon. His organization and Munish himself have over three years conducted weekly classes at Vidya Bangalore, as well as yoga workshops across Vidya projects in Pune, 
Mumbai, Delhi, and Gurgaon. To share a little more about Manish, he's been teaching yoga and meditation since 2003. He lived and trained for seven years with his guru, Himalayan guru, Bharat Thakur. Moved on from being the CEO of Artistic Yoga in 2010 and co-founded Total Yoga with Neetu Singh, his wife. Total Yoga has spread from India to the US, to UK, to UAE, to New Zealand, Singapore, and to Canada. He leads Himalayan treks in India and Bhutan, as well as a yoga teacher training in Bali. He's a meditation guide and he's the founder of the 21st Century Yoga Online, Yoga and Natural Retreats, where he is in one right now. Uh, he teaches uh, corporate wellness, mindfulness, leadership training, and his social projects include a huge give back like he does for Vidya, with that very thoughtful, sensitive way of giving back. Today's closing remarks are from Pratima Goel, uh, Vice Chair in Delhi. She has been part of the Vidya family for more than 25 years. She's a trained counselor and a passionate about all things in Vidya, especially creating women entrepreneurs and leaders. We look forward to learning from you, Munish. So over to you and thank you ever so much from all of us at Vidya. Namaste Rashmiji. Thank you for such a beautiful introduction. Friends, I hope I'm very clearly audible. If you could give me a thumbs up, that will help me to get going. Today's session I've designed such that we do a meditation together. It's a meditation called Prana Kriya Dhyan, where we move energy in a certain way. It's something you'll all enjoy tremendously. And before we get started, a simple note on our theme for the day, self-love, and seen from the yogic perspective, I'm going to bring this point just so that we can get started. We define yoga as yogas, chitta, vritti, niroda, the cessation of patterns of thinking or patterns within our consciousness. What this means in our day-to-day -day life is our mind, if it were like a lake and somebody throws a stone in that lake, somebody might have told you something when you were in college something in your childhood or when you were a young adult or even yesterday. But the event is over and yet that pebble thrown in the lake of your mind continues to create ripples for years, for decades later. Now, this is the essence of what you train in yoga. How does that pebble go through the surface of my lake? There is a ripple at that moment, but it's gone. It doesn't continue to produce ripples as it does for all our minds. This is the theme that we want to work with. And this goes a long way in removing uh, regret, guilt, uh, and all other manner of thoughts that can pull us down in these times. If we can go through life just like that, without those ripples dictating our life, we could go a long way in taking care of ourselves. With that in mind, I'm going to ask everybody to just maintain a minute's silence so we all tune in together with your eyes closed. You can place your index finger and thumb tips to touch. Jnana Mudra. And place your palms on top of your knees. Don't, that's if you're sitting on the floor. Even if you're sitting on a chair straight back, don't place your palms facing upwards. Place the palms down. It's more relaxed. It's easier for your spine. Take a few deep breaths. So instead of being aware of what you're thinking or what you're talking to yourself as of now, just bring your awareness to the breathing. That's all needs to be done. No need to stop your thinking through any part of the meditation. Just watch your breath for now. To begin our meditation, I'm going to ask everybody to please stand up 
And once you've stood up, just start to move your body. So just move your wrists, ankles, knees. Just start to move the body. Please get the body to move. So there's a certain thought process from the morning and that represents a certain body language that's been created. So just breaking out of that before we can get into a meditation. So just you can jump, twist, dance, do whatever it is that you don't allow yourself to do in a day-to-day -day basis. So any movements of the body-mind that you want to do. Just play a little bit, jump a little bit, move around and then please be seated once again. And as you sit with your legs crossed, or if you're sitting on a chair, firmly on the ground, begin to start tightening up your body. So make a fist, tighten the muscles of your calves, thighs, glutes, stomach, back, face. So make a completely tight body language, just as tight as you can and relax. Do that once more, breathe in, begin to tighten up the body, just stress your body as much as you can, make a fist and relax. And now block your right nostril, we're going to do Bastrika Pranayam, exhale out 10 times forcefully through the left. And let's do the same thing on the right nostril, forcefully. Ten times. Beautiful. And now place your palms on your knees and do it through both the nostrils 100 times. That gives you an active inhalation and an active exhalation. 100 times. If you have very high BP, you can stop after 20. Otherwise, do 20, 50 or 100 times. And now, just holding the breath, block the right nostril. So what you do with your hand is, you pull in the index and middle fingers in, block the right nostril with the thumb, inhale through the left, bring the ring and little to also close the left nostril and hold the breath inside. Release the thumb, exhale through the right. Once you've exhaled, close the nostrils with no breath inside. And inhale through the right. So through the right. Close nostrils, hold the breath inside. Exhale through the left. Close your nostrils. We'll do two more rounds of Anulom Lom. Inhale left. Close, hold the breath inside. Exhale right.
close. Inhale, right. Close, hold the breath in. Exhale, left. Close the nostrils. One more time on your own. Alternate nostril breathing. Beautiful. With your palms on your knees again. Now, close your eyes. Keep your eyes focused internally on the third eye space with the eyes closed. Place the tip of your tongue rolled up to the soft upper palate of your mouth. The index finger and thumb are touching. The spine is more or less straight. You've assumed all the mudras, asanas, and pranayam to now experience dhyan. Bring your awareness to the very base of your spine. At this point, begin to visualize a white light, the white light of prana. And now, as you inhale, visualize this white light moving up your spine to the eyebrow center. Leave that white light there and just bring your awareness back down as you exhale. This is a simple Kriya. Second breath, inhale. Visualize the white light travel up your spine. Leave it at the eyebrow center. And just exhale and take only your awareness back down. Let the light stay up. Third breath, inhale. White light up. Leave the prana at the third eye. Exhale, come back down. Inhale, four, internally chanting so as the white light goes up. Keep it there. Pause. Exhale, hum. Just awareness back down. Pause. The fifth breath, we'll be doing 10. Inhale up. So, white light stays up, exhale, hum. Six, inhale, so, white light up, hum. Three more times. So, um, so, um. Keeping the white light where it is, at the eyebrow center, bring your awareness to any part of your body where there is any pain, stiffness, worry, or tension.
and visualize the white light moving from your eyebrow center to that part of the body. Be aware if there is any tension, anxiety, stress you may be feeling and visualize the white light clearing that out. And now begin to visualize all those people in your family, community, who you would think about right now as if cool white light was pouring through every pore of your body. You're drenched in a moonlight white light and that healing light is now spreading to your family, friends, colleagues, community. And now, we're going to bring this white light of prana back to the base of our spine. So bring your awareness to the white light at the eyebrow center. As you exhale, internally chanting hum, and bring this white light down your spine, back to the base. Inhale, just your awareness to the third eye. Pause. Exhale, taking the white light back to the base. Inhale. Awareness to the eyebrow center. Exhale, back to the base. Inhale. Exhale, white light down the spine to the base. So breathe in. Hum, breathe out, back to the base. So Hum. So. Hum. So. Hold. Hum. Pause. The last three times. Take a minute to bring your awareness to what you've done, 
to the people that struck you spontaneously when you thought about them, sometimes people who we may not necessarily think about regularly, but suddenly when asked to, we spontaneously remember an old friend, an old colleague, and we are caring for them today. Of course, our dear ones, our loved ones, ourselves. At these times, it's imperative that we bring all our energy, all our thoughts, all our love to people around the world, including people we know, going through tough COVID times. Let's continue to be a beacon of hope, a beacon of light, and let this cool white light spread from us to everybody we come in contact with, and therefore help each and every person we know to relax deeply through these times. On a closing note, I'd like to thank the Vidya family for always thinking so much for everybody connected with the family and to be such givers every single time. Thank you. Thank you, Manish. That was lovely. As you rightly made us do, it is the breath or the life force within us, which is a part of the universe. And if we concentrate on that, even if it's for 15 minutes a day, I think it can bring around a lot of relaxation. Here I would like to ask if anybody has any question to ask about meditation in general or about yoga, would they like to do that? Um, is there anybody who wants to ask any question? Rashmi, should I close then? I think that's, that is beautiful. Please go ahead, Pratima. I think we should have asked them earlier, but even now while you're speaking and closing, if anybody has messages, they can put it on the chat box. Yes, if anybody, I'll just go. I, there seems to be some question here. Okay. Anybody has any questions? Like I have a question, Munish, would you answer it for me, please? Manish, yes, of can you hear me? Yes. Sometimes, however hard I try, I find it very difficult to concentrate. Like right now also, maybe because the mind was in a lot of other things, when you told me to visualize the white light, I tried very hard. I could do it for a few seconds, but it was very difficult. So could you explain that or talk about it a little further? The problem is the effort. So there will be times in the day where effortlessly you feel relaxed. Hmm. And at those times, then try this. This is a scenario that you're curating. There's so many technical things. So obviously, there are many things on your mind. Hmm. There will be times in the day where you're absolutely by yourself. You're relaxed. It's at that time that you should try this. In the I nature of meditation, any structured an effort like this, especially if you're the organizer, it's mm -hmm. almost impossible, right? Uh, so do it at your own time. It was just to show the technique. And now you can use that whenever you're just sitting sometimes at sunset or you finish reading the paper, you've got a bit of time, whenever. Just okay. if you could do that. So it doesn't matter how much time. It could be five minutes, 10 minutes, whatever Absolutely. time. Absolutely. You train so that uh, the desire to spend more time by yourself increases. Okay. So apart from this alom vilom and pranayam, which you have told us, is there any other 
posture or asan very simply if we could do to de stress or relax ourselves i would suggest doing sarvangasana we call it shoulder stand sarvangasana okay the the chin touching the chest immediately the vagus nerve gets stimulated which okay. then will help to slow down the heart rate the breathing so just by the simple act of sarvangasana even if you wanted to you couldn't be stressed after that i see that's interesting even i was reading somewhere uh, for the oxygen level which are a great center of attention right now that if you lie on your uh, chest and breathe deeply for 4 5 minutes the level of oxygen goes up so mm-hmm. is this a form of a yoga asana or is it something else i haven't come across that myself uh, okay having said that if it works uh, it may be something that yogis have tried and recommended i myself haven't come across that before what is the best time of the day to have the white light meditation this is the question yeah i would suggest the first thing in the morning brahma muhurta is between 4 to 6 am right uh, but uh, in either case whenever you wake up the first thing in the morning can i ask one more question if anybody has any others please do ask because i'm finding yeah. that i have a guru in front of me and the time to do it and the opportunity so i can't stop myself there there are lots of questions in the chat box i have uh, i'm trying to answer so there's one there's one says basic yoga poses that i can do every day every day yes and and uh, what do i do if i'm not able to not focus? able to focus sure. so the basic yoga poses just find which is the most comfortable position you can sit in so if that happens to be siddhasana or sukhasana so then you build your entire body training around that so if i want to sit like that for a long time then i need to strengthen my back so then i will add bhujangasana so let's do bhujangasana daily it will also come in the surya namaskar so that's already very good the second thing i'll need is core strength so let me put a little bit of work in core strength i may be able to start with leg raises and crunches and then eventually i want to make it into nokasana so that becomes very important thirdly i want to take care of the flexibility of my hips so i will do something that we call as baddh konasana keeping the legs wide but having the feet touch each other and the knees spread wide and dropping my body down if i do these three things daily it will help me to sit and that uh, asana goes a long way in taking care of my mental health also the second question was about focus yes. and the question is how do you improve focus there are way, very easy things to do one of them is that if i train to look at a point we use the same word for the eyes as we use for the mind it's focusing so if i start to focus on looking at one single point the best would be a source of light like a candle in a dark room and if i can look at the tip of the wick for 5 minutes 10 minutes and then close my eyes daily you'll find that you have a tremendous amount of focus welling up in you and it's a beautiful question because in anything in life whatever you want to do you need to train focus today a lot of the time the best thing we can do for our covid uh, friends and family is just to be a listener to listen to people's stories but even to listen and therefore to be a good friend one needs a lot of focus to just listen yeah. another question is by anil gupta what to do if anyone is positive and serious and not even able to do pranayam so that's beyond my scope honestly anil uh, that's a doctor's uh, prerogative and uh, the person will definitely need to be getting treatment Uh, the only thing one can say if they can and i, I i'm sure they can just work on having happy positive thoughts remembering the good times with different people that lend sure that the breathing is a little deeper mm. uh, without having to make an effort if it's not in their control so just uh, staying positive a lot of people prayer is a bedrock around which their mental training is built so they can pray they can do all those things that make them feel good about Uh, life itself uh i'll take up another question it was difficult for me to take the white light down 
Is that normal? Yes, yes, it's normal. The reason we take it back down is if we were to leave prana in the agnya chakra, it's very difficult to live the mundane, the day-to-day -day life if you're completely focused on the third eye space. It's good for meditation, but uh, to live life, it's better it's in the base root chakra. And that's why we bring it back down. How useful is Kapal Bharti in enhancing your breathing, Manish? It's very, very useful. Uh, it's fantastic to increase your cardiovascular capacity. So mm -hmm. Kapal Bharti and Bastrika Pranayama. How long should it be done, the Kapal Bharti? You do Kapal Bharti just 10 on each side and then do 100 rounds of with both the nostrils. We call that Bastrika okay. if even the inhalation is active. You can do, once you build up to 100, and over a course of time, then pause for about two, three minutes and do another set of 100. And maybe you can build up to two to three such sets. That should be good. Uh, uh, one of our viewers has con uh, commented, Bharti, Sarvangasan is not easy to do. That's true. And it can be modified. You can uh, go against a wall and yes. slide your heels up on a wall. Yes. and uh, put a bolster or something to support your back. Mm -hmm. uh, the benefits are tremendous, so it's worth making these little arrangements to get your body into that posture. Rohit Kumar is asking, can there be other meditation part two other than the basic asanas? Are there any other ones besides the ones that, which are the, the basic and which have ex been explained? The everywhere? question is, can there be any other meditation poses? Yes, yeah. you can uh, also sit on a chair as long as the back is straight. Mm -hmm. uh, find any position. See, your yoga and my yoga will not be the same. And therefore, you have to find the posture for your body. You're not, uh, you're not there to fit into some posture. You're there to find the correct posture where your body relaxes and can be steady. So if you can put in that little effort, then you will know the correct posture for yourself. After that, it is, uh, you know, if you take a certain interest, okay, I want to sit like this for an hour. What should I train? So let me do a few asanas like that. Rather than somebody have to sort of force you into a posture, find the pose in which you're in repose. Right. You should listen to what the body is saying too. Um, we never use the word body uh, okay. uh, in isolation. We say body-mind. Okay. Oh, right. inter interline, inter intertwined. That yes. in yoga, we treat them as one uh, with two expressions. Right. One question which comes very often, it does not come here though yet, is, is there any asana which could help in sleep? Because I find many of the people who come to me, they come with the problem that they cannot or are unable to sleep. Correct. The first thing that they will have to do is some active work, like Surya Namaskars, asana, something, so that there's physical activity. Currently, there's too much mental activity and that's not shutting down at night. We need to balance with physical activity. Mm -hmm. uh, even, the, you know, even insomniacs, when they go for a long trek and so on, they sleep like babies. So right. it's a question of getting manageable amounts of physical activity daily. Secondly, they can start to practice yoga nidra mm -hmm. and uh, sleep. Every person's sleep problem is unique because every person but his trigger point for the sleep problem is unique. Right. The only commonality would be things like getting your body active and doing things like yoga nidra, mm -hmm. journaling, finding what is the root. Uh, sometimes it could be financial stress. Sometimes it could be health or relationship stress that's causing you not to sleep. Right. And that's very important to understand. What is a good asan for frozen shoulder? For frozen shoulder, again, it depends person to person, but gradually you want to build your way towards Gomukhasana, where hmm. one hand is that like is this, and the other right. hand is the other way. Uh, but when you have a frozen shoulder, that will be difficult to so start simply by getting some movement in the joint itself. And then over a course of time, build towards Gomukhasana. Right. Manish, there are, these are some very useful tips that you have told us. And if there are any more questions which any of our viewers have, you're welcome to ask. We have time. Uh, 
does anybody have anything else or can I? I think it's been a beautiful session. I just want to ask what is a routine that we can do every day, Monish, just for strengthening of uh, mind, body and soul? <laughs> Something very basic that we can all do. I know Surya Namaskar, you said is one. What are the others yeah. that we can easily practice? Sure. So, Any age group. It's important firstly to wake up early uh, with the sun and now with summer, it's even, it's a better time. So, and once you've sort of gone to the loo and stuff, it's a good thing to do your yoga and meditation first thing in the morning. So you can do a few Surya Namaskars. You can do postures like Sarvangasana, Bhujangasana. Keep the spine twisted in Ardha Matsendrasana. Like this. Then you move towards Pranayama. So some Anulom. So you would have started with Bastrika before Surya Namaskar. Then after that, after your Asanas, you would have done Anulom Bilom Pranayama. And then simple Sahaj Pranayam. Just challenge yourself. Can I sit still for 10 minutes? And can I just sort of count my breaths from 27 to 0? Most of the time, by the time you reach 21, 20, you would have lost your count and your mind would have been rushing to solve some problem or to sort of bring you to a different thought process. Whenever you catch yourself, again start at 27. If you can go from 27 down to zero, that's the first step of meditation training. And every day, just see whether you can go one minute longer. So if you start at 10 minutes, if you give yourself a 21 day challenge, on the last day, you'll be at 30 minutes, which is quite good. If you can sit by yourself without the need for any entertainment or expression for 30 minutes daily, you'll be a completely changed individual. And then... Uh, your entire, the way you respond to life will be very different because you can subsist or you can exist without any external uh, validation. This is very important when it comes to self-love, that you don't get your kicks from the outside, that uh, you don't outsource all your entertainment to Netflix and the like, you know. You can, uh, you're, you're happy by yourself. That's self-love as it is. That's absolutely wonderful, Manish, what you are saying and totally agreed. We find everybody is busy doing something or the other, either the phone or the TV or speaking. And I don't think it's a challenge to be silent for five minutes or 10 minutes at times. So that is a very, very useful and important tip, especially for our youngsters to take some time and be just without any distraction or outside uh, electronic gadget or anything and just be with yourself. Any other message you'd like to give to our viewers who are coming from all ages and all backgrounds, just anything for the present times of anxiety and general fear? I think the biggest message would be that if you take care of yourself, that's the biggest thing you can do to contribute to a global effort towards COVID. You taking care of yourself, being a pillar of health and strength itself is the biggest way that you can add beauty to the world as of today. Absolutely. I totally agree with you. I think we need self-love and care, especially now. I think many of us are feeling helpless, angry, guilty, weak. And how to overcome this could be through your self-awareness, self-love and first guarding yourself. Only if we do that can we help others. Like Rashmi said right in the beginning, we first have to get our own oxygen before we can help anybody else in need. One of the ways to do this is of course yoga because it attunes the mind and the body. But to keep ourselves healthy, we can use some other tips also. That is, communicate with others. Listen attentively. Be active listeners. You must learn to detach yourself a little from everything and everyone. By that, I don't mean stop caring. By that, I mean be in moderation. Don't go very, very high or very, very low in your emotional level. Keep it at a moderate level so that you can handle yourself and others in any crisis or any challenge. 
If possible, try to remain in a state of joy. And I have found one of the ways to do this is to concentrate on the breathing or the life force, which is our pran, what we call our pran shakti. Once we reach a state of calmness, we can help others. And that itself makes us feel good. It becomes like a cycle. I find many people very strict with themselves, judging themselves and others too harshly. Don't do that. Love yourself, be kind to yourself, and have empathy for others who might be going through any sort of suffering, physical or mental. Please remember, many of these activities like yoga, singing, cooking, even taking care of a garden, taking care of a pet, all these release good chemical hormones in your body, which will in turn maintain your stability of body and mind. So with that, I would like to thank Manish, who has taken off time from looking at this beautiful scenery around him to be with us, our Vidya family, to help them maintain good mental and body health. And we assure you, as Rashmi said right from the beginning, each and every member of Vidya has to take care of themselves first and then of the other members. So be good to yourself, be good to others. We would like to bring you on every Friday a session on how to do this. Self-love, self-care and loving others. Our next session that will be on next Friday, same time, is by a musician. Rashmi, you'll have to tell me the name again. Right. <coughs> Friends, again. This, is, uh, this is Tara Kini who runs a very beautiful program where, of classical music and singing. Uh, she's a Drupad singer and a great spiritualist. She will actually guide us through that. And uh, we, she'll also teach us how to sing with her some of the shlokas, some of the bhajans, and listen, we listen to her. So thank you. Thank you, Manish, for a wonderful session, really moving session. And thank you, Pratima, for excellently handling the questions and your thoughts. I feel that I, do, I don't know about the others, but just by looking at the scenery and talking about this is making me feel calm. Yes. So I, I do hope it has had the same effect on all the viewers. Thank you for being here. Thank you for being with us. Thanks. And we shall always be together in this challenge and others. Thank you. Thanks.